when you measure that, you look at the 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 insulin resistance happening in the world. And look, yes. I'm not a doctor, so let me be very clear about that. I'm just saying from my own biohacking and looking what happens, you know, when I when I've been really cognizant about the packaged foods, about watching the sugars, I feel better, I sleep better, my gut health is better, my relationships yes. are better, my business is better. Like, you know, there's one of my friends, Gary Brecca, who runs Streamline Health System, which is a genius. He he says, um, Sugar is actually the root of all evil. Not Seriously, it did. Wait, so I'm dying to know the bl- the glucose monitor that you do. Was it levels or is it a different? Was it a different one? A glucose? Was it just a? Yeah, it's a different one. Um, I mean, there's like seven different companies out here who are doing it right now, and I was just I had a friend recommend one to me, and I just like popped it in there. So yeah, so I'm actually in the middle right now. The company Levels is one they're doing like kind of trials right now. So I got in on their trial. I'm actually in the middle of it too because. It is just crazy, you know. I think that when it when it comes to nutrition, yeah, like I totally agree. Sugar really is with you, like your friends, that it's the root of all evil. When you, it's because it affects your hormones, your insulin, and in some resistance. It affects your metabolism. Like there's so much to it. This whole archaic way of thinking, which is why I think so many people are stuck in the diet world, anyways. Of just like, oh, it's only calories in and calories out. It doesn't matter what you eat. It's just calories in, calories out. Yes, calories matter. That's science. Like you can't be overeating and expect to lose weight. However, uh, there's so much more to the story. Um, so anyways, I, I'm super passionate about that. But yeah, I, I agree. Sugar, it's the root of all evil. <laughs> yeah. And, and what I'm using, it's called the Freestyle Libre. So- oh, okay. Yeah, that's the one. So so that's the one that I'm using too. I, I took it off today, but that's the one that I'm using too. But Levels is a company that then it's an app and it connects with Freestyle Libre and it's continuously monitoring it. It's actually, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the really interesting things that I've, that I've discovered is like a, a half a banana puts me at past like, like it's in the danger range. Yes. But everybody's body is different. And so, you know, one of the things that I, I think and Look, I'm not recommending any company any for anyone's right. Person, sure, but paying attention, it's it's like what Tony Robbins says: if you can measure it, you can manage it. And and for me, it was just looking at. I just want to optimize, knowing that I've been yes. sick, knowing that my body's been through hell and back, knowing that I've had to rebuild my confidence through doing all this work and showing up and getting in shape and using exercise, which is greater than any pill that you'll ever use, and and being willing to build myself up has just come from like literally sitting down, acknowledging, measuring, and then taking massive action. Yeah. One of the things that I'm really curious about, you talked about your self-worth and being tied into how your body looks and being attractive to men and how you felt when you looked in the mirror and things like that. What has shifted in your confidence? Oh gosh, that's such a good question. And I, I take a deep, I take a deep breath and a pause on that because what I will tell you is that it is, it is continuous work, right? It is continuous. It's not like all of a sudden, I, you know, I had this epiphany moment where I'm like, oh, now I'm good. Like, I don't care. I'm confident now. I don't need any of that. Are there still days where I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, you know, d- doing a little bit of negative self-talk and all of that? Absolutely. But what I will say is that for me, um, and I, I want to go back to like kind of when things started to shift for me, but what I will say is that for me, it's not that I don't have those thoughts anymore. It's not that I don't, I don't look at myself in the mirror and I don't feel bad or when I, if I'm, cause I'm, I'm divorced now and like in dating and stuff, when I get into these relationships that aren't serving me and I, and I start to question like, what well, you know, well, what's going on here. But what I've found is that I'm able to recognize it faster and I'm able to like shut it down. So when I have that negative talk about myself in the mirror, I'm, you know, like when I'm looking at myself, I may go there for a second, um, but I'm going to pull myself out. Right. And so I think that for me, when things started to change was really just when I started being able to understand myself a little bit more, right? When I started, when I talked a little bit before about like kind of really doing the work to get to the root of why you, where, where, where you're at and why, where you're at, right? Like I wasn't born this way. I wasn't born hating who I saw in the mirror. I wasn't born feeling like I needed men's attention in order to feel whole. I wasn't born that way. So it was really about me taking, and it was painful. Like I like fucking hate therapy. Who likes going every single therapy session I went to? I always felt great every time I left. But every time I would go there, I was like, good God, I got to just open up the scab again, right? Like it's painful. Nobody wants to do the work. Like it's hard. But I think for me, it was really like 
starting to number one, like understand my triggers, right? Like what, you know, why, um, what triggers me to, to have that negative talk to myself and feel not confident, 